Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh arrived in Samba in Jammu and Kashmir as part of his three-day visit to forward areas along the borders with Pakistan and China, including Chumar in eastern Ladakh today. Addressing ITBP Jawans, he hailed them as a sons of Himalayas guarding the Sino-India border. He identified road connectivity and communication as problems in border areas and assured that the government is working to provide better equipment to ITBP personnel. He said that the government is working to further improve India's ties with all its neighbours, including China. India and Pakistan are holding a flag meeting today to address the issue of frequent ceasefire violations in Jammu and Kashmir. Brigade commanders of India and Pakistan are meeting at Chakan Debagh, crossing at Pooch district. The field commanders from both sides are expected to discuss modalities to defuse the tense situation. State funeral will be accorded to Jagmohan Dalmia in Kolkata this evening. His mortal remains have been kept at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata for people to pay the last respects. BCCI President and Cricket Administrator Jagmohan Dalmia passed away in Kolkata on Sunday following a massive cardiac arrest. Lok Jan Shakti Party issued its second list of candidates today. It has declared names of nine candidates. Earlier, in its first list, the LJP had declared 12 candidates. LJP and NDA constituent will be contesting from 40 seats in the Bihar Assembly election. Notification for the second phase of Bihar Assembly election has been issued today. Voting in this phase will be held on the 16th of October in 32 constituencies out of 243. Last date for filing nominations is 28th September. Scrutiny will be held the next day, that is on the 29th of September. Candidates can withdraw the nominations till the 1st of October. 64 files relating to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose have been made available for public viewing from today at the Kolkata Police Museum. The West Bengal government had on Friday officially declassified the files. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that his US visit will build on the substantial ground already covered. In a series of tweets ahead of his US and Ireland visit on Sunday, he said that the visit will build on the ground covered during his US visit last year and President Obama's visit to India earlier this year. About his Ireland visit, the Prime Minister tweeted that it is the first such visit by a PM in almost 60 years and will focus on improving people-to-people -people and economic ties. Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that India's economic growth is improving despite unfavourable global winds. Emphasising that India has the potential to be the bright spot in the gloomy global economic scenario, Jaitley said that the government is moving ahead with its reforms agenda. While addressing global investors in Hong Kong, he said that India's fiscal deficit is coming down and inflation is under control. India received $19.78 billion in FDI in 2014-15 from a dozen major FDI source countries that PM Modi has visited since taking over in May last year. This accounts for nearly two-thirds of the $30.93 billion US dollars FDI the country received in the fiscal year, which was 27% more than the year before. Death toll due to dengue in the national capital has crossed the 20 mark. The Delhi High Court has directed the AAP government to give details regarding funds released to civic bodies for malaria and dengue control programs. <laughs> Nepal witnessed violent protests in several districts as it adopted a new constitution with fully democratic and secular provisions. The secular constitution was adopted on Sunday amid celebrations and protests. The new constitution was unveiled at a special ceremony in Parliament in Kathmandu by Nepalese President Ram Baran Yadav. The statute was framed after seven years of deliberations, marking Nepal's transition into a fully secular and democratic republic from a Hindu monarchy. Greece's Alexis Tsipras has said that his left-wing Syriza party has a clear mandate after winning the country's fifth election in six years. He said Greeks faced a difficult road ahead and recovery from financial crisis would only come through hard work. With nearly all votes counted, Syriza had won more than 35% of the votes polled. This was short of a majority, but Syriza will form a coalition with the nationalist independent Greeks. Conservative New Democracy won 28% of the votes polled. The snap election was called after Syriza lost its majority in August. Crowded aboard buses and trains, thousands more migrants flooded into Austria today, even as at least 13 refugees drowned, making the perilous trip to Europe in search of a better life. Six children were among those who died off the coast of Turkey after the inflatable dinghy carrying them to Greece collided with a ship. As several thousand more migrants arrived in Austria from Hungary via Croatia, Budapest abruptly decided to reopen a border crossing with Serbia, whose closure on Tuesday had sparked a surge of migrants into Croatia. Scrambling to address a growing Syrian refugee crisis, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has announced that the U.S. would significantly increase the number of worldwide migrants it takes in over the next two years. The U.S. will accept 85,000 refugees from around the world next year, up from 70,000, and that total would rise to 1 lakh in 2017. 
Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel won the Singapore Grand Prix on Sunday even as runaway championship leader Lewis Hamilton retired mid-race injecting new life into the fight for the Formula 1 title. Vettel led from start to finish in a race that was temporarily interrupted by a fan wandering on the track. Vettel's third win of the season came by 1.4 seconds over Red Bull driver Daniel Ricciardo. Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen finished third.